love composing music. I love it so much that I want to make all of you composers. It didn't start out that way, I have to say. I began as an indifferent musician. I was playing the piano when I was five, and by the time I was seven, I was practicing an hour a day. My mother paid me five cents an hour, <laughs> which I renegotiated to 10 cents. And I always had the impression that I worked my entire childhood. But I practiced, and I got pretty good at it. I went off to college and had never written any music. The college I went to had a really interesting program. They believed that all performers should compose and all composers should perform. And as a pianist, that meant I had to write music. And I really wasn't that happy about that. I actually thought that all great music had already been written. In fact, I had never heard any music by a woman composer. I didn't know women could write music. But they asked me to compose, and so I did. And within six months, I knew it's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was as if in the forest of life there are many paths, but only one of them was illuminated. from a Paul Eloward poem, The Earth is Blue Like an Orange, and it's about my relationship to the earth and my love of the earth. So why was I so compelled to write music? It took me years to figure it out. I think I wanted to get to know myself, and music was the perfect vehicle. Lewis Mumford says that at the heart of artistic endeavor is to be heard but not to be found. Perfect. I wanted to tell you my story, but I wanted some privacy. So in the 40 years that I've been writing music, I would say the first 10, I was sort of trying to figure things out. In the second 10, I'd learned a few things, had a, had a baby, and I had learned to heave my heart into my mouth a little bit better. In the next 20 years, my interests have been going from inside to outside. What is my relationship to the world, to the larger world, to earth, to sky, to community, to spiritual life. Finding your authentic voice, speaking your truth, not only of who I am, but who I am becoming. <laughs>
relationships with community. About 20 years ago, the arts world had changed, and artists were being asked to leave their private studios and go off to community and do their work. I had received a large grant from an organization to work for three years with an, a, an opera company, a symphony orchestra, and a social service organization. I was to write music for each of these organizations as well as do a major project. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do with the social service organization, but I quickly learned to ask questions and to listen. What do you need? What do you want? Here are my talents. How can I serve you? They had a residential facility for homeless women. These women often lived with their children, but sometimes they had lost them to foster care because of the instability in their homes. And they were working to get them back. So through the parenting program, I devised a program of helping them write operas of their lives. The idea is, is that if you are able to express your story, uh, your story in a different medium, you gain mastery over it. So I worked with them for over two years. We sat in a kitchen, we used the pots and pans, and we drummed and we sang, and they created their own operas of their lives, of their hopes and their dreams. So what about kids? I, I want to teach kids how to write music. Well, let me digress for a minute. The classical music world has a pretty strict protocol of how you teach composition. First of all, you have to play an instrument, maybe 10 years, maybe 12, and then when you go to a conservatory or a university, you have four years of studying the basics. Harmony, theory, counterpoint, solfege, sight singing. And if you have time left, you're allowed to write music. But I wanted to teach composition the way I learned to paint, and you probably did too. Remember, you walked into the kindergarten room, and there's the easel and the paints, and the teacher is putting a smock on you, and she then hands you a paintbrush, and she gives you your most important art lesson of your life. Try, she says, try not to get the paint on the floor. <laughs> and then you paint, and it's all you. It's all this personal experience that you're having. So that's the way I wanted to teach composition. I, for about 15 years, I went into public schools in Philadelphia, and I taught a program to kids, usually in very poor schools. They hadn't had music programs. They certainly didn't have musical instruments. So at first, we would start to compose for, what do you have in your classroom? A desk and a garbage can. And then I would say to the kids, hey, what do you have at home? And they'd say, oh, we have junk. I said, great, bring in your junk. And suddenly, recycled cans became drums, and shoeboxes became guitars, and guess what? If you have an instrument, if you build an instrument, you have to write music for it. I said, OK, let's take very big pieces of paper. Why don't you draw your music? What's the beginning, the middle, and the end? What's the storyline? And I said, OK, now let's reduce the paper. How about inventing notation? How do you write high or low or duration, how long a note is? And they wrote music, but always, always as a gift for others. So now we're going to hear a short excerpt of a piece called Tremble, which I wrote for my father as a gift after he passed two years ago.
shiver in delight, tremble in love. So, how about kids who are practicing? How about, how do I engage them more fully? Well, we're so used to performing for people, how about I change that preposition and use with, creating music that has professionals performing with children. So I started creating music like this. I have a triple string quartet that's one professional quartet and two, and, uh, two student quartets. The kids sat next to the professionals. They performed with them. They learned by sitting next to them. It was so powerful. And what about little kids? You know, the kids who can hardly play music, who can only play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? I created a piece called First Light. This is for very little kids who um, play a melody over and over again. And I originally wrote it for uh, orchestra and children, but this version has um, kids. Um, good, thank you. Um, it has children from music from everyone who is going to perform with uh, the ensemble. So the kids have a melody that they repeat again and again, and then slowly the ensemble wraps its arms around them. Doesn't that put a big smile on your face? <laughs> so, what about outcome? Oh, that magic word. We want to know if you're going to put the time and the effort and the patience into writing the music and doing this work with, with kids, is it going to have a measurable result? Will the kids at least stay in school longer? Or maybe graduate? Will they do better on their test scores? So as an artist, I'll tell you what I think. That is none of my business. <laughs> I write the music, I teach. There's a wonderful quote by Nelson Henderson. He says, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you will not sit. So I do this work as an act of faith. I do it because I believe. And you know what? It's also spiritual practice with the emphasis on practice. Every day I get up, I write my music, I teach my kids, and then I come to you and I say, here, this is what I have for you. Thank you. <laughs>